Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform webinar, Pilot Actions Inspiring Policy Change. This is the third and last webinar in our series on cultural routes and itineraries. Today, we are focusing on water-linked heritage from the WAVE project. So my name is Astrid Severin, and I'm a thematic expert for environment and resource efficiency at the Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform. I would also like to welcome my expert colleagues, Magda Mihalikova, who is also a thematic expert for environment and resource efficiency, and Eugenie Suplisson from our communications team. So, as always, before we are starting, some housekeeping rules. Um, as you know already, we are recording this webinar, and the recordings will be later available online, so you can watch this webinar again. Uh, and uh, we will also make available all the presentations and uh, useful links and suggestions. So, um, if you have any questions, and we hope you have many, and you are starting to discuss with us, we would uh, hope that you are not shy and that you're posting your questions in the chat and let us know. Uh, we will also post some useful links and information in the chat in the meantime, while people are presenting. And finally, at the end of this webinar, we will have a survey to uh, give you the opportunity to let us know how you liked it and uh, if you want to suggest any other things for the future. So please let us know. We're really keen in, your feed in understanding your feedback. And of course, we're also very interested in understanding who is with us today. So we have uh, two little polls prepared, which we would kindly ask you to fill in for us. So Eugenie, please launch. So our first question is a single choice question. So please let us know where you're coming from, what type of uh, organization you represent, an, an EU institution, a local regional or national authority, a heritage organization, an NGO or a fund, academia or another organization. In which case I would also encourage you to have a look um, Oh yeah, oh, we have uh, really a majority here from uh, local, regional and national authorities and uh, a good mix of, uh, of other um, uh, representatives, academia, NGOs and so on. And quite a lot of people from other organizations. So please let us know who, who you are, what organizations these are and post to us in the chat where you're coming from. And our second question, um, we would like to know why you have been attracted and interested in this workshop. So do you want to also uh, develop pilot actions or transfer good practices? Um, you're interested in water-linked heritage or the development of new tourism offers. Maybe you want to revive your cultural heritage or uncover rivers. Um, please let us know you have multiple choice. Thank you. Thank you very much for voting. So let's see what your main interests are. So there is a lot of interest in how to transfer good practices and developing pilot actions, and a lot of interest in reviving cultural uh, heritage and uh, tourism offers. So I think with this, we have a, a lot of offers today for you. Uh, everybody can learn a lot, and uh, we hope that you're going to be very active in sharing with us your thoughts and your remarks and your questions. So, um, I want to uh, present to you a little bit uh, what we are having exciting on the agenda today. We have a really uh, interesting agenda and uh, excellent experts that are uh, sharing their experience uh, for aspiring policy change today. So after our little introduction, uh, we will have a um, introduction from uh, Etienne rotzinska verhelle uh, from the Joint Secretariat of Interreg Europe. Um, he is going to set the scene for us, so to see what our key questions are. And then we will see what inspiring policy actions have been uh, in the WAVE project. Uh, we have uh, Miguel Mejuto from the provincial county of Alicante. We also have Mark Berens from the municipality of Breda in the Netherlands. And we're also happy to have uh, Søren uh, Bitch Christensen from the municipality of Aarhus with us. So hello, all three of you. Um, and we're looking forward to your presentations. 
And then we have uh, uh, two presentations from our pilot actions. One is uh, from uh, Ravenna Municipality, from Stefania Gambi. Hello, Stefania. Um, and the second one is uh, coming from Easter Granum region in Hungary. And we have Peter Nagy with us, who is also going to present his pilot action. And then we are looking forward to really good exchange uh, and um, uh, yeah, exchange of experience with you uh, on how these pilot actions can be uh, put into place. So. Um, we have, of course, a lot of policy solutions, not only from the uh, WAVE project, but also from other um, projects in Interreg Europe, uh, which have all been working on culture routes and itineraries. Um, we have uh, solutions from WAVE, Keep On, the CRISTA project, Green Pilgrimage, uh, Ramsat, the Local Flavors project, MoMA, InnoCastles and others. And they have all been putting uh, very interesting suggestions on the table for the digitalization of heritage, for reviving cultural roots and itineraries, and for water-related heritage. We want to uh, draw your attention also uh, to the, one of the key services or golden service, uh, as my colleagues would say, of the uh, policy learning platform, uh, which is the peer review. Um, we have here uh, an overview of uh, all the peer reviews that have already been implemented. Um, we have another four in the pipeline, and uh, we would hope that if you're interested in our services, please don't hesitate um, until the end of uh, this month or the end of the year to so send us your applications. We are very open also to help you. It's an easy application, so don't be shy. Um, maybe water-linked heritage uh, uh, is one of the subjects uh, that you're interested uh, to go into deeper exchanges. So um, we had already um, uh, two events, uh, two webinars in the series of cultural routes and itineraries. Uh, so on the 18th of October, we talked about digitalization of heritage and you can find here also the registration um, the recordings, I'm sorry, and also the presentations. The same goes for the Reviving Cultural Roots uh, webinar, which we had on the 25th of um, October. And uh, on the, we want to show you also that on the 5th of December, there is an interesting webinar, which is called Why Skills, Knowledge and a Powerful Network are Vital to Create Better Regional Policies, which you might want to, to attend. You find the links on the presentations and also in the chat, so you can uh, always look at this. And uh, we had a very interesting on-site workshop last week uh, in Cannes sur Mer in France, where we talked about cultural and natural heritage in coastal regions. Um, uh, and we will have all the information by the end of this week also online for you, so you can also check this out. So thank you for your attention. And uh, without further ado, I have the pleasure to introduce our keynote who is going to set us the scene uh, on the latest opportunities with Interreg Europe and in particular on the development of pilot actions and the inspiration of policy change. So Etienne, the word is yours. Thank you, Astrid. Uh, good afternoon, all. I'm really glad to be here today for this uh, last step of this suite of, of uh, webinar, uh, so the, the last step of the route. Um, so indeed, um, when with, with Magda and Astrid, we decided to have a kind of a bit different approach for this kind of webinar after the two webinars Astrid presented, to now go a bit more deeply in this transfer of good practices and how what you've been discussing uh, during the project can actually be implemented into actual actions and actually uh, pilot actions. So I'm going to share my presentations. And I hope it's fine. Um, so the idea of this uh, presentation is to give a, a broad overview of um, what's next uh, in the in the next or in the open to like about to open uh, interact your program for the for the 21 27 programming period. Uh, in general, and then, of course, uh, with a specific interest for the pilot actions, what you've been doing, what WAVE, for example, has been doing in terms of pilot action, and what will be able, uh, what will be possible in terms of pilot actions for the next programming period. Um, so here, just uh, uh, to, to really set the scene, uh, um, so the, the next program, the, the program that is 
just starting uh, with the first call that closed in, in uh, June. Um, it's um, the same uh, kind of program that the one you've been experiencing for the 1420 uh, programming period. It's still about a program focusing very much on regional development uh, and policy instruments, uh, bringing together policymakers mostly uh, to exchange experience and to make sure that this exchange of experience and this exchange of knowledge is leading to uh, policy changes, policy improvements, meaning new projects, meaning revision of policy instruments, meaning improved management. So a lot of different changes. Uh, so this program is gonna be very much uh, the same. So as you know, very different from other interact programs you might uh, otherwise experience. Uh, with two main pillars that again will remain the same, uh, the projects. Again, we had the first call uh, and we're gonna announce um, the, the project that have been approved uh, early next year. Um, and the policy learning platform. So the work that uh, here uh, for this uh, specific objective, uh, Magda and Astrid have been doing with of course the support of, of the colleagues in Lille. So this will remain the same. Um, when we go a bit, um, a bit more specifically in, into the pilot actions, um, that's actually a kind of learning uh, from the current programming period. So in this current about to end prog pro programming period, so the 2014-2020 uh, program, um, as you know, uh, pilot actions were a bit, I wouldn't say complicated, but uh, not so obvious uh, and not an integrated part of, uh, of the learning and of the exchange of experience. Uh, for the call one, two, and three projects, uh, it was possible to implement them only after discussing it uh, at the midterm review. Um, and it was only possible to implement this pilot action in the two years of phase two. So it was really clear. You had to identify in the first years of the phase one, some good practices that you wanted to then test in the phase two. Uh, for the call four, we started to be a bit more flexible already saying, okay, well, the call four might be a bit shorter. Uh, there's only a, a one year phase two. So actually, if you want to already implement a pilot action that you quite quickly in the project uh, identified, uh, you can already implement it in phase one. So we started already to test this kind of flexible approach. And that's also what we did for the call five, uh, the call that was very much dedicated to learning and exchanging on COVID-19 responses uh, linked, of course, to the topic of the project. So that, that made us think a little bit that maybe these pilot actions, uh, we don't have to wait so long in the project implementation to start them. Maybe some, some partners already have quite quickly in the project, some good ideas that they would like to test and that can be ben beneficial for the whole partnership in terms of uh, really um, testing and, and learning by doing. So it's really you test and then from this uh, you learn. Um, in, in terms of figures for this 2014, 2020 programs, um, we approved at the end of the day 130 pilot actions uh, for more than 7 million euros. Um, so th that proved that it was really interesting and a lot of projects actually took this opportunity um, to, um, uh, to start doing something, start testing something with the aim of first testing and then and, and contribute to the learning uh, by actually doing something uh, in their regions. And uh, WAVE is one example with two pilot actions, uh, but we, we have the same kind of uh, figure for several projects where some several partners in the same project we're also interested to test different things, um, either in late phase one or in phase two. So with all these elements, um, we thought it was actually interesting to maybe make it more obvious uh, for projects to uh, do pilot actions. So for the 2021-2027 program, uh, now it's possible to actually uh, start a pilot action from semester one. So of course, then the, the good practice or the origin of the of the pilot action is not coming from the project because the project hasn't even started. So it is coming from uh, the preparatory phase or because you actually identified something else in another region of Europe or somewhere else, another initiative that is interesting for you and that you would like to test. Uh, but it's possible already to start it there or of course later. Um, and then at the midterm as well, a review of the project, you will also have, again, we will ask you the question, you were maybe not able or, or willing to start something at the beginning, but maybe later in the project implementation, you would like to start something. So we will ask you again the question, if you want to, to try and to test 
uh, a pilot action. The idea is really to, uh, as I was saying, to have a kind of more flexible approach to um, really give you more the opportunity to test something and not only exchange um, through events, but um, to, to learn by, by doing really. So a few words uh, on this. Um, the three main elements uh, are still uh, very important for us to consider that that's the pilot action would recommend or not recommend. Um, so the idea is really that uh, this pilot should be of very much testing nature. And again, uh, we will learn about it a bit more with WAVE uh, later today. Um, it's, it's really about something that you're not sure of, that you have never been doing in your, in your region, that you've been seeing in other regions and that you're not sure if it's gonna work. So first you would like to test. So this has to be clear. It's about testing. Uh, the inter is really important as well. Um, so this, this origin of this pilot action has to come from another region, uh, has to be um, implemented, developed and implemented with other regions as well. So uh, meaning that uh, if you, you would like to test in, in, your, in your new project 2021, 2027, 20, uh, a pilot action, we, ha we have to be, it has to be clear that um, you can exchange with the partners uh, about the learnings that the pilot action, you're not gonna develop it by yourself uh, in your region, but that you're gonna benefit as well from the, from the experience of other partners. Um, and uh, so, so this interregionality that is at, at the core of all interagular projects, of course, has to be as well reflected when you do a pilot action. It's not something that you do by yourself in your own region. It's really something that you exchange uh, with the other partners, both in the development phase and also in the implementation and sharing the knowledge. And last point uh, for all uh, interagular activities, really, um, the policy relevance and durability. So uh, it has to address a policy instrument. Uh, so when you test something, you do it because you hope and you expect that this learning will actually lead to new projects, a revision of a policy instrument, improve management. So these three elements really have to be considered. And again, if they are clear already at, at the application stage, it's possible to already start as of semester one, a pilot action in, in, in the frame of, uh, of a project. Five uh, minutes, Etienne. Yes. Um, so, uh, some some support, of course, that is available on our side as well uh, to to check. Uh, so you can already check what has been approved already as pilot action, and at the at the application stage, you can also ask for feedback uh, from the JS. Um, one word about um, uh, about the, the the next call, let's say, and when you will be able to again submit project and uh, those pilot actions. Uh, it's going to be uh, early next year, so from the 15th of March to the 9th of June, uh, all uh, topics will be open again, um, and uh, we start to have online networking, so if you already have ideas of projects and possibly pilot actions that you would like to do, uh, here you have the date, uh, you can find the connection uh, and the registration link on our website, so you can connect, exchange ideas, exchange with partners, and hopefully be able to submit uh, as of uh, 15th of March. And we will open the call during our annual event in Stockholm and early next year. Voila, I tried to keep the time, Astrid. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, we're always available to answer you uh, either here or at a later stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Etienne, uh, for this uh, nice introduction and uh, for letting us know also that uh, there's uh, increased opportunities for the pilot actions. I think that's uh, excellent news also for our colleagues that are here in the webinar um, and also for giving us a, a short snapshot already into the future when the next calls are coming out. And um, uh, yeah, when you can already participate in the different networking events. So I, I should have guessed that there is a lot of questions for Etienne already on how to work with these pilot actions. Um, I see nothing in the chat. Um, I, something coming from our panel. I don't know, Stefania or, or Peter, do you want to know something uh, on pilot actions and how they can be um, implemented in the future? Otherwise, um, I think we are going first into uh, our first round uh, of uh, inspirational actions. Um, so we have uh, had uh, inspirations here coming 
uh, for our two pilot actions in the WAVE program. So we have uh, three short presentations of the good practices that have been inspiring our colleagues uh, from Italy and Hungary. Uh, and uh, we would like to start uh, with uh, Miguel uh, Mejuta. We have um, here with us from the uh, Council, Provincial Council of Alicante. So you will present to us Blue Roots, Alicante's hydrogeological heritage. And uh, yeah, the word is yours, Miguel. Uh, we're looking forward to, to listening to your presentation. Thank you, Astrid. Uh, good afternoon to everybody and thank you for being there. Uh, I'm going to show one of the good practices we share in our Wave Interact project. Uh, for us, it has been a very interesting project. We have learned a lot from our partners. You will have the opportunity to see their presentations after, after mine. Uh, the, the good practice we shared with them were our so-called blue roots that are roots uh, in our hydrogeological heritage in, in the province of Alicante. Alicante is in South uh, east of Spain in a quite dry region, but with a lot of aquifers and a lot of groundwater potential. So our proposal, what was the, the objective was to educate through an attractive uh, touristic and laser proposal uh, about natural and cultural water link heritage to increase the perception between the general public of the, about the value of groundwater and the culture related to the use of groundwater uh, during centuries to foster the protection of groundwater and water link heritage. And also, but not less important, to show how this natural and cultural heritage is a key to mitigate the impacts caused by global climate change. Resilience can be increased managing groundwater properly and also using learning from the past. How we have done this? We have created a set of routes that can be done by car or bicycle that cover our whole region with shorter routes that can be done by, by feet or bicycle. And we explain in the guides and the web page and the apps uh, how water and groundwater interact to create a landscape and also how they interact with human settlements. We have done a catalogation task of all on systematization of all the existing information and the information is present clearly and in an attractive way for, for the users. Uh, the, the whole idea has a web page and an app. Uh, it has um, uh, studies, previous studies with the inventory done by expert teams. And we have produced guides with a lot of graphic materials. You can find them in the web page, but you can find also in a published uh, book. And this has, you, has been used to create educational routes for secondary school, from the general public. And we work with tourist agents of the area to promote the, the routes. Uh, we are happy with the experience. We have had an important number of visits on the web page, a lot of guides distributed, uh, thousands of publication likes and retweets in social nets. And we have detected the increase, the real increase of visitors in these places, which are the resources you need if you want to implement this good practice in your area. First of all, you need a technical team to coordinate uh, the whole process. Also, we built a strong panel of experts to catalog and rate syst with a systematized system the, all the elements of heritage. And uh, also you need to develop the platforms, both by editing and printing the guide, developing the web page and the application. Which is the potential for, for transfer? We, we, we have found really because our, our partners 
have uh, uh, used this this idea that the the potential for for transfer is very high even when you don't have groundwater but there is a lot of water link heritage in in europe you you can use the, this kind of a strategy uh, we need policies that encourage the interdisciplinary study about water and water link heritage and also policies that impulse fighting global climate changes on the experience of the past. And it's very important to systematize and catalog uh, these, all this heritage. And that's it. I try to keep it short and I hope interesting for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very interesting and uh, spot on time. So thanks for your excellent contribution. Um, can you share with us also the address, for example, of your web page so that people can maybe also look at them and browse around them? That would be really great. Uh, um, if we have questions for Miguel, yeah, you are. Um, so when did you start that process, Miguel? Uh, which year? We started like 10 years ago with the first uh, studies on the catalog and the building of the catalog. Uh, we launched the web page uh, seven years ago, and now we have been reworking the idea also with the learning in wave project because uh, blue roots are not uh, something static. At, at the beginning, we focus more on groundwater and only the scientific elements, but learning from other partners has shown us the, the, the relevance of including cultural heritage, uh, social elements to work with stakeholders to redefine roots. Very good. Excellent. So thank you very much for this introduction. Um, okay. I hope to see how you have been influencing the policy actions and, uh, and uh, maybe you can then also ask some questions to our pilot actions. So our second speaker is going to be uh, Mark Behrens. So Mark, hello. So you're going to talk to us on development in dialogue uh, yeah. and you're from Breda. So the word is yours. Okay. Uh, I hope you can see my presentation now. Uh, just have to Said, put it to full screen. Uh, good evening. Thank you uh, for allowing me to talk here. Uh, I'm Mark Behrens. I'm from the municipality of Breda, and I work at the Heritage Department in Breda, and that's part of the Spatial Planning Department. So uh, we're focusing uh, on the development of our city and heritage within that. Can you still um, try to put it in full screen? Because we just see the uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, I'll try. Um, can you have a look? Yeah, uh, so better or still? Mm, no, we still can't see your uh, app. It's loading now. And like last time, we would need you to uh, change the, the mode like we did in the technical check, you know, like in- uh, Yeah, yeah, I know, but uh, <laughs> I see a lot uh, in the this one, uh, it's not working, it's nice. Um, yeah, because I think you clicked on the on the screen there. Mm. Yeah. yeah down, there, down there, you clicked on the screen, which is next to the loop. Um, yeah, yeah, I know, but... Uh, can you maybe un click on it again? Click on it again. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh. No. Otherwise, I can share the presentation for you if you want. Yeah, yeah, please do that. Yeah, okay. I will do it right now. Well, uh, I can see it. Um, and you yeah, can let me know when you want to change the slide. Yeah, next slide is okay. Can I have my next slide? Yes. Um, uh, WAVE is about uh, policy instruments, and the policy instrument we are targeting in Breda is uh, our head is uh, policy uh, from the municipality, and it's called uh, Resources for the Future. Um, uh, of course, it's written in Dutch. We call it Grondstof voor de Toekomst, but uh, on the WAVE uh, website, uh, you can find the English version, and then you can read about it. Um, we build this around a curated collection of heritage, so we can focus the most important uh, heritage in Breda 
and uh, we have a few chapters in it uh, to uh, uh, elaborate our uh, objectives. It's about experience, our heritage, uh, about knowledge from heritage, uh, how we take care of it, the defensive side of heritage, and uh, the development of it. And uh, development and dialogue is in the last chapter. Uh, it's, of course, uh, yeah, how, how do we develop uh, our city uh, using our heritage? Can I have next? Uh, we've noticed uh, during time, um, the way we uh, use our heritage, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's strict and uh, then it's more flexible. And uh, we've noticed being very strict is not always the best way to uh, use our heritage. And nowadays we are trying to be uh, a more flexible organization and uh, be more flexible with uh, our heritage. Thank you. May I have next? Um, yeah, the, the origin of uh, this good practice is uh, about uh, a neo Gothic church, the Heilige Hartkerk. Uh, it was built uh, in the early 20th century and it was closed in 1984 and not for uh, much later it was squatted. Um, the church was sold and, and the owner the wanted to demolish it to, to build an apartment uh, building and it resulted in a really strong protest and uh, one of the protesters uh, managed uh, to uh, fill in an application form uh, to let it become a listed building and in 2001 it actually became a listed building. Uh, in the end in 2004 it was uh, upheld by the high court so it took uh, more than 20 years between uh, the dem demolition plans and the first uh, protest uh, until the discussion about uh, uh, demolition or uh, what, what we, we should do with the church. It was a really long time and all the time the, the church was not maintained and uh, it was uh, really not okay. Can I have next? Uh, we've noticed uh, that, that um, yeah, a, a hard protection uh, uh, sometimes is even counterproductive, and we were experimenting, uh, yeah, how how to uh, be more flexible. And at first, we tried that uh, in our building permit system, and uh, we were thinking if we can uh, uh, work together with the, the the owner, the plan maker, and we're talking about trust dialogue uh, we want to make a really compact permit and uh, we have a weekly coordination on the construction site and all the agreements there uh, we record in writing and we add it to the permit um, it, it was working it was about trust and dialogue but still there were risks because it first had to be a monument and uh, it was similar like the, the church you've seen before uh, can I have next uh, that, that's uh, how we got to development and dialogue in the end, and that's how it's in our policy instrument. It's about, uh, example is about the former casino uh, cinema. You see it on the left. Uh, it's a building with a high uh, heritage value. It's uh, uh, in the street, you see a 20, early 20th century building, but uh, in the interior, there are even uh, medieval parts. And uh, we had an intention uh, to listing this building. Uh, the, the, the cinema stopped and the new owner, he said, he, I want to repurpose it. I want to make a football, food hall concept. And um, we, we, we decided uh, it, it would be better uh, not to list this building, but make it a joint plan. And uh, we've listed it after the conversion. Can I have next? Um, what, what we did with that, uh, we've learned that it, it isn't necessary always to protect. It, it, it can save an awful lot of time. This, this conversion took us two years. And normally we are about seven to eight years uh, away with the conversion from a monument. Uh, so in our policy instrument, we've added, uh, we are not going to list uh, a building if we know there is a development pending. Uh, and we will list after uh, the development has been completed. The only exception is when trust is broken, we always can list the building and then we have a power position. Um, 
I've shown you uh, the, the first example, but in, in, in the meantime, we've used it on uh, eight other projects. Uh, can you um, please conclude? Yeah, yeah, I've one last slide. Um, what, what, what have we learned in WAVE? Uh, development and dialogue was first meant uh, between only uh, the owner, the developer, and the municipality. Uh, WAVE is about stakeholder engagement, and we've learned uh, that stakeholders are much more than only the owner and the municipality. Um, but if we do that, we, it's essential to have uh, access uh, for stakeholders to the heritage information. And our action plan is about that. So we have uh, the water table and the heritage map that are both uh, actions to uh, give the stakeholders more access to our heritage information. That's what I was going to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark, for your presentation. Also very interesting approach to heritage um, and um, how you enlarged your stake, uh, dialogue to the stakeholders and gave them more access uh, to the information. So that um, helps in, uh, in increasing the acceptance, I guess. Um, you mentioned at the beginning that you um, became more flexible with regard to your heritage and not so strict. So um, could you maybe say two words about that? Is that because you're working with different types of buildings now, like churches, or what is it exactly? Uh, it, it, it's, it's about uh, getting more experience, uh, being uh, more brave, uh, that you don't need protection, but you are able to talk about it, to convince people uh, in, in, with the words you say. Um, and, and, and on the other way, we learned that uh, being really strict uh, is, is sometimes really counterproductive. So we really need to be more flexible. Yeah, that may mean that uh, something is, nothing is happening and uh, uh, buildings are completely derelict uh, instead of being you know, living yes. buildings. Yes, and transformed. Thank you very much. Very interesting uh, approach. Um, and I hope also that has also inspired good uh, the policy actions, your, your, your dialogue. And uh, with this, we're going to Søren, which has another very interesting water-related um, yeah, good practice um, from Aarhus. So the word is yours, Søren. Thank you very much. And I reckon you can now see my presentation and that it is in full mode. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and for listening. I will be uh, presenting um, the uncovering of the River Orwood project for you, uh, which is a quite old project uh, in a sense, but it uh, came out as uh, probably the best good practice that we can uh, share from Orwood because it's, it's still very, very timely, so to speak. Um, it took part from 1992 until 2015, but it is still a very crucial part of uh, uh, modern day Aarhus. And uh, Aarhus, I should say, is um, the second city of, of Denmark uh, with around 350,000 inhabitants uh, within the municipality. So here's uh, first uh, a few pictures of what uh, the harbor used to used to be like and what happened. What happened was that the old river, Aarhus, was put into a channel pipe, uh, put underground from around 1930 until 1940. It took around 10 years to uh, complete that transformation. And the reason why it was done was uh, mainly due to infrastructural changes. Um, to put it short, it was a matter of uh, facilitating uh, harbor traffic. Uh, but, uh, that was the main reason. Another, but that was a secondary reason, was sanitary uh, reasons. Uh, um, it was the the river was considered uh, smelling and uh, very dirty, and something that was not very attractive for city life. So this was a fantastic, or maybe not fantastic, but it was a very important transformation of the inner part of the city. So what came instead of the picture that you see to your right and, this, and the pictures that you see to your left was what you see to, 
to your right here on this slide. Um, so the picture to your right uh, shows the situation after um, part of the river, uh, the first part of the river was covered and uh, and desurfaced, so to, uh, surfaced, desurfaced must be in 1939. So obviously this um, transformation was uh, felt very much by uh, local citizens, but it was highly approved of. There was a general understanding that in those days that this was the right thing to do. However, in, uh, in the 1980s, the city council of Aarhus decided to reopen the area. Um, um, what had happened in the meantime was, uh, first of all, that uh, it was envisioned now that traffic uh, patterns to and from the harbor would be changing within the near future. But there was another reason was that uh, the whole idea of city life was also undergoing transformation. And there was a growing awareness of the importance of having attractive inner city areas. So. Finally, in 1992, the local plan uh, that was uh, uh, dealing with the reopening was approved, and then it lasted around 19 years, actually, to fulfill the resurfacing of the River Aarhus. And you can see part of the construction work uh, on, the, on the image on the photograph to, to your left from 1995. Um, Speaking from the perspective of nowadays, uh, I think it's pretty fair to say that what was uh, provided by the uncovering, first of all, was uh, a very important um, creation of recreational spaces for city life, of new forms of uh, activity within the city was now, were now being uh, made possible because. Uh, traffic was restricted from the area and uh, the water was now visible and much cleaner than in 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 the past um another re another very important side effect or maybe a main effect of the project was that uh, uh the occasion was used for a rearrangement of water management within the city center, including reservoirs for sewage and surplus water, constructed to what I have here labeled reconstructed lakes. That doesn't mean that we invented lakes. It means that lakes uh, outside of the city center were made larger uh, to uh, fulfill their part of this new water management system. In the very last phase of the uncovering, Near the mouth of the river, a huge sluice mechanism were in, was installed in order to deal with uh, foreseen and actually also experienced flooding in these areas uh, caused by climate changes. And the system has a huge capacity and plays a very vital and very important role of uh, modern water management in, uh, in Aarhus. What are the potential for transferring this good practice? Uh, this might be a little disappointing, but I, I come up with a, a national example of Copenhagen, uh, um, because in Copenhagen, which obviously is a very large city, talks are also now heard of uh, uncovering what is called the River Lelgo, which is a river that streamed through the center of Copenhagen. And the motives of uh, eventually doing so are very likely to what I have experienced or what we have experienced in Aarhus. It's a matter of climate policy now. It's a matter of uh, making attractive um, uh, city centers. And by that, triggering new ways of urban life. Uh, based on the qualities of and nearness of water. And I'm sure that this situation can be uh, found many other places uh, within Europe, because it has been a general policy of many cities, both uh, large and smaller cities, uh, to remove surface water during the 
20th century. So I'm sure that this situation can be found many places in Europe. If you're interested in knowing more about the uh, uncovering of the River Orr project, you can uh, see a full video uh, uh, on YouTube, and obviously they are also accessible from uh, the Wave from the official Wave project site. Um, yeah, and here it is. Thank you very much. This was my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Søren. Um, we've also, in addition to this, put in the chat uh, the link uh, to a story that the policy learning platform has been writing about uh, daylighting rivers. Uh, so thank you uh, that there is more information about Aarhus in particular. And um, coming from Brussels, I can just say that uh, there is a lot of work at the moment going on in uh, now, not in, in the 90s. So I, I'm sure they can learn, uh, like many other cities, a lot from, from your example, what you have been doing and what has happened afterwards. So it's always very interesting mm -hmm. uh, to understand that impact. So uh, thank you, thank you very much for these uh, three you. inspirational good practices that we have uh, seen now. And uh, we would like to uh, go into uh, our first pilot action with that. Um, if I don't see any more questions, which I don't. So, Stefania, the, the word is yours. Uh, we would like to hear uh, about your uh, pilot action, which is immersive tours of Ravenna's water-linked heritage and how you have actually been inspired, uh, what experience you made in the implementation and what are your main lessons learned so to see how easy or difficult it was to transfer uh, these good practices. So the word is yours. We see. Can you already see my presentation? Okay. Yes. And please put it in full mode still, yeah. and then we can go ahead. Should be in the full mode now. Is it working? Working. Okay. All set. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Stefania Gambi from uh, the European Policies Office in uh, Ravenna's municipality. Ravenna was partner of the WAVE project together with uh, uh, a research center called Certimac. Ravenna is a medium-sized uh, city in the north of Italy on the Adriatic coast. Despite our medium size, our history has always been interconnected with uh, water. And thanks to our strategic position, the city was chosen as capital of the Western Roman Empire in the fifth century and later on of two other kingdoms. Water still represents uh, an essential ingredient of our economy on, on the port and connected, based on the port and connected industrial activities, agriculture and also tourism. Ravenna is a town of waters. We have the sea, fresh waters, marshlands, ground waters, each represented one or more chapters of our history. Our water-linked linked heritage does not only um, include uh, environmental assets, but also built assets ranging from archaeological sites to contemporary industrial uh, areas and buildings. As you can see, uh, such a variety of waters, we realized immediately, starting with this project, that we needed to systematize this um, wide uh, variety of waters. And uh, the project, Wave Project, gave us the opportunity to uh, develop already existing but disconnected ideas. Thanks to the exchange sessions with the other partners and inspired by their good practices, we started classifying and linking the three main heritage sites uh, representing three different uh, uh, water um, special values, historical times and functions. On, uh, your, on the bottom right side, you can see the ancient port of Ravenna. Uh, it's an open air museum now, representing the origins of our town, the, our past. And the historical value of water is, um, can be labeled as sector in the, in the sense that this heritage needed to be, needs to be protected. Then on the top uh, side, we, are, we have the Darsena former docks area, which is connected to our recent industrial past and uh, represents one of our hottest issues in the present. The heritage here uh, is so diverse and uh, that any redevelopment needs to be uh, taken 
into it needs to take into consideration a more general urban planning according to the factor approach. Then on the bottom left side, you can see the maritime park, our environmental water linked heritage connecting our future to our past. Uh, the heritage dates back to the Middle Ages, uh, but has been uh, badly corrupted by human exploitation over the centuries, and now the municipality uh, wants to reinstate its uh, key natural uh, features in order to guarantee a sustainable future. The water-linked uh, heritage of this site is the vector of urban, of urban planning strategies. According to the heritage as vector approach, built and landscape heritage as an, ass an essential narrative dimension. Knowledge about what uh, happened in a landscape, district, town or building uh, can inspire and guide future transformation. Such a variety of uh, water landscapes uh, match, is matched by a kaleidoscope of uh, local actors that are committed to uh, water-linked heritage in its broadest sense. In addition to WAVES partners Ravenna and Certimac, the rich panorama of water-linked uh, stakeholders includes uh, national and regional authorities, Bologna University, other research centers, uh, uh, water management bodies, cultural and tourism foundations, and sports associations. At the end of uh, February 2020, we had uh, our first in-presence meeting with the local stakeholders and internal staff. And it was a very promising start as 27 people um, attended the meeting, including our policy um, instrument managing authority. We immediately uh, agreed on the fact that uh, we needed uh, a storytelling um, based on water as a solution to valorize our um, water linked uh, heritage values. But for days after this meeting, the first COVID case was registered in Ravenna, and two weeks later, the first national lockdown was announced. So we had to um, rethink everything. And um, in a couple of months, we managed to, um, to meet our local stakeholders online and found solutions uh, to, um, um, to keep uh, pace with the work plan of the project, of the WAVE project. Uh, at the beginning, it was quite difficult for us to uh, manage uh, these interactive tools, but uh, in, in the end, uh, we uh, found solutions in, in order to have uh, everyone taking part and having their own says. The idea, yeah, four yes. minutes left. Oh, only? Mm. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll try to speed up. These are the good practices. You have already heard about the good practices we have been, uh, by which we have been inspired. Um, the important uh, aspect that we want to underline is that we didn't uh, decide to transfer the whole um, good practices, but we uh, split them in different uh, activities, actions. We submitted these actions to the stakeholders and together we decided which elements uh, we could, uh, uh, we could transfer from the um, partners with practices. So we uh, decided to uh, tell the story through a pilot action uh, to test this water-linked uh, narration. The pilot action um, is inspired by uh, the Blue Roots uh, from Alicante, but also from uh, Breda's redevelopment in dialogue, and also from Orus, uh, the uncovering of the river that you have been, uh, you have heard about uh, a couple of minutes ago. And um, what we did in addition, we tried to enhance these uh, uh, tools we learned from the partners by adding a um, drone mapping and uh, 3D virtual rendering. The drone mapping um, is meant to provide an easier visualization of the abundance of water related features in the area, uh, framing each point of interest within the overall map. Then the 3D rendering is scaled down to uh, an individual item and reaches and enhances the narration through experiential navigation. All stakeholders have been involved in the collection of materials to create uh, the contents narrated by our pilot action. And the pilot action also capitalizes uh, elements that we have uh, uh, 
um, produced in other uh, European projects, uh, our local European projects. Uh, the Dare Uya uh, projects, uh, where um, an open call for citizens was launched, uh, and citizens were asked to provide uh, historical images and videos of the Darsen area, or the Tempus project, where uh, the University of Bologna researchers provided text and uh, uh, images and videos for uh, the historical elements of uh, our town. The pilot has proven to be successful, either because the digital and virtual tools have been appreciated by the general public, but also because the whole process has been co-created with the local stakeholders, which was our initial biggest challenge. The main problem encountered with the pilot was the, the getting the required permissions for the drone mapping. And the goals reached by this pilot will be uh, further developed and completed with uh, the scope of action one of our action plan with the integration of water heritage, uh, water related heritage generation with original context collected and added along these tools with videos and pictures. The main challenge, Joe, is still to be faced as the um, Europe, uh, European Regional Development Fund uh, local program has been uh, redesigned in complementarity with the Italian Recovery and Resilience Facility, rather than in continuity with the previous programming period. Therefore, uh, the former Axis 5 dealing with tourism, culture, and uh, art artistic and natural heritage does no longer exist. Therefore, uh, what now what we uh, can do is uh, we can focus on uh, um, priority objective one, a more competitive and smarter Europe in order to capitalize the digital tool that we have developed with the pilot action uh, without losing though the uh, equally uh, important physical element. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefania, for your presentation and for showing us uh, how you have been managing to integrate that uh, into your pilot actions, the, 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 the good practices that we have seen before. Um, I found it very interesting how you said that you have been splitting the good practices into different elements or different actions, and then you decided together with the stakeholders which parts you, you are taking from that. So. Um, we, pre we prepared a virtual pills, uh, that is, uh, we prepared a video describing the, in the individual good practices. We submitted these videos to the uh, stakeholders in advance, and then during the meeting, the online meeting, we uh, asked them to vote the individual actions. Very interesting. And how many stakeholders participated in that? Uh, 17. Very good. So maybe we can ask um, our good practice owners, um, maybe Søren, Mark, uh, Miguel, uh, any questions uh, to our presentation from Stefania? We also learned some good practices also from uh, Peter, <laughs> from Easter Granum. <laughs> oh, Peter, yeah, I knew Peter, you can also jump in, of course. I find it very interesting. Um... At first, I had a question like, uh, did, it, did, did your pilot affect uh, your final action plan? But you've already talked about it. Uh, perhaps, uh, what, what could Breda learn from your pilot, your pilot action? What, what, what's, what could we learn from it? Um, you, might, you might learn to connect all your heritage, water-linked heritage sites in a, a more... Um, modern way, <laughs> innovative way. Unfortunately, I couldn't show you the pilot, but I can send you the link to the pilot so you can have a look yourselves. Yes, please do. Please share them with us. That would be really interesting. Søren? Thank you. Uh, very simple question. Um, at what time during the WAVE project did you come, come up with the idea for the for the pilot actions, was that uh, something that was almost uh, clear from from the start, or did it did it come bit by bit? Now it came uh, uh, bit by bit, and in particular after uh, the exchange of the site uh, visit videos. As uh, I said before, we only had the first uh, occasion to meet in presence 
at the kickoff meeting in September to 2019, then we should have visited the, the individual uh, uh, partners uh, towns, uh, but we did, didn't get this opportunity due to the pandemic. Therefore, we decided uh, all together to exchange site visit videos of the various areas. And thanks to these uh, videos, we developed the idea of connecting all of our sites. Very nice idea also these videos. I think uh, in especially in times of pandemics, it's a very nice visual way to connect people to things they cannot visit, but at least they can can see them uh, um, uh, and, and make it more accessible for them. Yeah, I mean, uh, Miguel, you also still have the chance to ask Peter and uh, I also ask Etienne um, if you have uh, specific questions. Sure. Actually, I have a I have a question indeed. Well, I kind of I kind of know the answer, but um, I mean, I expect the answer. Um, would you say that Stefania, that it changed a lot uh, the fact that you've been able to include the stakeholders, not only to you know to to get the knowledge, to hear the other partners discuss about how they did it in their own regions, but to actually try it yourselves? Did it change the way you involve stakeholders in? So in your regular activities and in this pilot, did you launch new methods? Did you did something a bit different than what you did before to involve stakeholders? Unfortunately, this was my first uh, European project. <laughs> Therefore, I didn't have the opportunity to uh, work with the local stakeholders before, but I've been told that this has been uh, a starting point, which has been also adopted for other European projects later on. Okay. It was also very interesting uh, to hear what Mark said, that he was like working with a typical set of stakeholders, uh, which was in his case, you know, the, the owner, the developer and uh, the municipality, I guess, if I remember this well, Great. and then he just enlarged it. So is that also something which you took on board for you, Stefania? Yeah, I'm, I must say that uh, the lead partner and uh, the agency that supported them were very well prepared. The poor they started by, and Delft University, which cooperated with us in the project, uh, were very well structured and prepared. Therefore, they um, asked us to, um, uh, to point out all the uh, various stakeholders that might be involved from the beginning. Therefore, the, um, there was this wide stakeholder database that we, we created at the beginning of the project in the first month. And this helped us also uh, find out something that <laughs> we didn't know we had. <laughs> I mean, probably some of our departments work with the, some of these stakeholders, some others uh, with others. And we, we had this opportunity to have a, a database, a very rich database that uh, can be taken into consideration. Also for excellent. Yeah. Very good side effect. Miguel, you also raised your hand. Yes, <laughs> just to congratulate Stefania for all the things they are been doing in, in their area. And just to throw a question maybe to her, maybe to everybody. Don't you think sometimes that Interreg is quite restrictive with the idea of the, you only have to impact policy instruments, but you there in your area are doing a, a lot of uh, activities that go further than the strict policy instrument. Don't you think that? Yes, I fully agree, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we share the same problem. Um, indeed, the, the, the question is that we have to prove the influence on the declared policy instrument, whereas we have already reached the influence on other policy instruments which were not taken into consideration at the beginning and at the time of submitting the application form. Indeed, also the recovery and resilience plan has been influenced by what we have done with the WAVE project. And we have already um, got some funds to uh, develop, to redevelop uh, our water linked heritage sites. But uh, these don't work as, <laughs> as a proof of influence for Interreg. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. I think this is uh, um, uh, just a last question from my side, maybe also with a short answer, but I think your, your key challenge is really indeed to, you know, access the, the funds. Is that uh, the is main issue? 
yeah, we need, we need uh, funds in order to redevelop uh, uh, some of these areas. We and what we have to do is submit projects to the European uh, Redevelopment Fund, uh, the new programming period, because the uh, old programming period uh, uh, did not um, have enough uh, availability left. Well, um, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this, also for your questions. And we, of course, cross fingers that you are finding uh, so the right access also to the funds for this interesting action that you have been developing and giving this fresh view. Um, if you want to still share any links um, uh, also on, on, on what you have been doing, uh, Stefania, please don't be shy. Also, I wanted to ask Mark if you can share the link in the chat of your English version of the document. Uh, could be very interesting for our participants. And uh, with this, um, I would like to go to, to Peter. Uh, Peter is also going to uh, present us a pilot action that got inspired uh, through the, the WAVE project, Good Practices. Um, and uh, it's also about water-related heritage valorization through storytelling in the Easter Granum region. So uh, very much looking forward to seeing that um, and what you have been doing uh, well, it's not only Hungary, isn't it? But you're going to explain it yeah. to us. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I try to give it full screen. Fine. Okay, so uh, uh, hello to everybody uh, and thank you very much for the opportunity to share our um, uh, experiences with us uh, implementing the pilot action. My name is uh, Peter Nagy. Uh, I am uh, representing the cross-border organization. It is uh, an uh, EGTC, uh, which uh, is uh, mm, making his activities on the Slovak-Hungarian uh, border area. And uh, we are quite a um, big uh, um, region. We are representing a region, Easter Granum uh, region. Our name is uh, after uh, the rivers, uh, River Danube. It is a Latin name, uh, Easter, uh, and the Gran is, uh, is uh, also a Latin uh, name of uh, our second uh, biggest river. And we also have a, uh, smallest uh, river, so we also call us uh, region of three rivers. So we are really happy that uh, we could uh, uh, be partners in uh, 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 such water-linked uh, uh, project. Uh, so as uh, here you can see, this is uh, our region. Uh, I could say that uh, we worked uh, with uh, the most uh, um, stakeholders and uh, it was a, a really good experience to work with them. Uh, it, um, they were over 30 of them. And uh, we usually try to find uh, uh, chance and possibility uh, also during the pandemic to, uh, to have uh, uh, physical meetings together. Uh, let me uh, introduce two dimensions of our project uh, on the bit complicated uh, but well constructed uh, scheme. Uh, in two vertical uh, column in the middle, you will see the vision and connected steps and tools toward uh, achieving uh, uh, our goals. As inputs, there are inspirations from our project partners, from their good practices and the general tool uh, to achieve our vision uh, is the policy chance uh, on the uh, right side uh, of the scheme. Uh, our pilot uh, is uh, based on the uh, regional status quo uh, and uh, it um, helped us define additional water related uh, heritage site, uh, sites uh, in the region. Uh, implementation of uh, research identifying tangible and intangi intangible water related heritages uh, with a special focus on, uh, on traditional water related occupations and legends and creating thematic routes along these heritages applying uh, storytelling. Uh, so uh, uh, our um, pilot, uh, the main concept, concept uh, of our pilot was learned from the Blue Roots uh, uh, good practice uh, of Alicante. 
which uh, we will ad adapt uh, and test. So we adapted it and tested. Like Blue Roots, we have uh, set up an expert panel to research the heritage values and uh, create a heritage evaluation system which uh, uh, enable people, not experts, to understand the value of uh, the heritage site uh, they visit. Uh, the outcome of the pilot, uh, as also in Blue Roots, is a guide document published uh, on the Instagram on website, with uh, which uh, I will, uh, of course, uh, share with you uh, in chat. Uh, so uh, our pilot activities, uh, uh, one, uh, first one uh, I can mention is uh, Heritage Inventory, uh, which with a special focus on uh, intangible heritage collected through a contest. Uh, so this idea of the contest was learned uh, from Ravenna, which uh, had a cultural recovery Central Europe Interact project in which a video contest was organized among uh, children who had to prepare a, a video about uh, tangible or intangible heritage side legends, gastronomy and traditions. Uh, we fo focused on built heritage, professions uh, and uh, legend uh, stories. And uh, I could uh, mention that uh, we have also some problems with, uh, with this uh, uh, heritage inventory uh, and the contest because we we made this contest on uh, social media and Facebook and uh, usually when you are looking for after uh, legends and stories uh, these are uh, uh, well known by uh, all the people you know and they uh, don't use Facebook so we needed to uh, to make uh, interviews with uh, with people uh, from uh, the chosen 15 villages uh, which uh, our pilot was uh, focusing on and uh, and uh, that was much more better and uh, mm, and uh, more successful uh, story than uh, than the contest but uh, but we tried and uh, and uh, we also uh, get some inspiration uh, in, uh, during the contest uh, con the contest uh, the second topic of our pilot was uh, to prepare videos uh, about intangible heritages as traditional water related professions and the water related uh, uh, legends. Uh, uh, so, um, these uh, for this activity, we were significantly inspired by the uh, Brabantrum members' pra uh, practice of Breda where local people were interviewed uh, who told stories about la la uh, the life during uh, the world wars. So uh, uh, it was uh, a really uh, good uh, inspiration. And uh, as a third pilot uh, activity, so the uh, third result is uh, uh, Blue Roots. So uh, we call them Hungarian language cake utak. Uh, uh, we uh, created uh, five uh, uh, thematic roots. They were uh, um, created and uh, besides them, the main idea, uh, idea learned uh, from Blue Roots uh, about um, creating thematic roots. We also learned from Ravenna, uh, the Imagina uh, Cervia mobile, uh, mobile application, which is basically a tool guide application with a special, a special character. So we, we also do have uh, the regional uh, information uh, website uh, uh, and uh, we put uh, this uh, uh, and, and also we do have an application and we, we use the, the good practice of Helena uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, this to, um, to share uh, these blue routes uh, uh, for our tourists uh, and also domestic uh, uh, inhabitants uh, on these platforms. And uh, uh, at the end, I um, would like to um, mention policy change. Uh, well, uh, the pilot activities uh, will be extended to all uh, the 82 settlements, the region developing, uh, developing a new integrated water related heritage valorization project, 
completed with the uh, investment type of activities to uh, renovate uh, the heritage sites. The project will be submitted to the uh, Interreg program. It is a cross-border Slovak-Hungarian uh, Interreg program uh, with the leadership of Istagranum and uh, in partnership uh, of uh, the involved uh, settlements or partners. According to the um, latest communication of the managing authority, the program drafting, uh, drafting including tape uh, types. So the tape type, we call them uh, territorial action plans. So the um, more projects uh, uh, connected to each other. Uh, so this type of uh, project uh, measures will be finalized by September 2025. So it, uh, it has been already. And the first calls will be launched uh, in uh, the beginning of the next uh, year. So the approval of uh, submitted project uh, proposal are expected until uh, probably summer 2023. So this is a phase uh, the two of uh, our project, and this is also our um, uh, policy change. So indicator in, in the project. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. This looks very, very interesting as well. Um, excellent things that you have been achieving um, and uh, uh, which you have been sharing with us. I hope that some of the information is also available in, uh, in English so that people can access it more uh, easily. And I guess uh, we will have some questions, especially also from uh, from Miguel, maybe uh, who has uh, been seeing how much uh, your uh, Rutas Azules uh, have been uh, implement have been inspiring here uh, uh, the colleagues uh, in in Instagramum. And uh, yes, maybe we can start with you, Miguel. Okay, thank you. Yes, it's it's lovely to see the the work and they've been doing. Uh, I, I have a little question or suggestion for, for Peter. You said you are going to do an online publication. Don't you think that uh, maybe the fourth of May, making a physical publication, uh, a book in paper, can be also interesting to reach your older stakeholders that have problems with the digital world? Yeah, you are right. Uh, we, are, we, we try uh, to... Uh to uh, keep it uh, also in a print uh, version uh, because it is also useful. We, we also did uh, small maps of uh, our five uh, thematic uh, routes, which are uh, physically uh, in our uh, touristic information uh, offices. Uh, and uh, uh, during the summer, this summer, the touristic season, uh, they were uh, all 5,000 of them uh, were uh, uh, used by uh, tourists, uh, mainly uh, by bikers, because uh, it is a um, format which, uh, which fits their uh, bicycle uh, map uh, uh, pockets. Uh, and uh, and uh, it is really useful. And uh, yes, the multilingual uh, challenges are uh, uh, present in our region. So we uh, usually uh, use uh, everything multilingual. Uh, that means Hungarian, English, and uh, Slovak, because this cross-border region uh, is uh, well known and uh, favorite between uh, also um, Slovak um, uh, tourists. So uh, yes, um, I could tell that uh, we we try our best uh, also making uh, printing versions of of, uh, of uh, our uh, studies materials because uh, these are useful. Okay. Thank you, but it sounds like uh, these things are going very well. Uh, Five thousand copies uh, to the to the tourists is, uh, is not bad. Um, so uh, you have a very good material at hand. So we have more questions. Maybe um, you know from Mark. You want to go ahead, Sören? Yeah, I, I was just wondering, uh, Breda is uh, a city with uh, four settlements around it. Uh, how do you man manage stakeholder engagement with 82 settlements? Is, is that possible to that, do, do that in one stakeholder group or do you need perhaps 
20 or 50 or how do you manage this we have a good practice because we we uh, we are an egtc so Euro european grouping of uh, territorial uh, uh, cooperation so we have 82 member municipalities you know so we have a practice with it because uh, when we have a general assembly then uh, then we uh, usually host uh, more than 50 uh, uh, people uh, and uh, and um, yeah we are also lucky because uh, our office uh, is in a big conference center so we have uh, offices uh, to or where to uh, organize such meetings and, uh, and it is uh, also a good experience that uh, in the beginning just uh, 15 of us were on these meetings and uh, when uh, the next and next uh, stakeholder meeting uh, was held then uh, then uh, other stakeholders find it uh, interesting to be part of uh, of our work and um, and uh, at the um, last uh, stakeholder group meeting uh, we were 35 of us so we are happy and, uh, okay, and we, are, yes. we still are in contact because uh, because we we are working on uh, on um, picking up uh, the most uh, um, the better the better uh, mm. heritages heritage mm. sites uh, which can be part of the um, project which will be apply for there's also a little competition here <laughs> so we yeah, can yeah, who yeah, can yeah, be yeah, part yeah. of it it's excellent I, I think competitions what i have heard in this series seem to work very well video competitions photo competitions yes. competitions who has the best heritage that's included in the project excellent so yeah there's a question from Søren, and maybe then we can also go uh, and ask uh, maybe stefania you also have like some input for for peter and then etienne but Søren, you start please Thank you. Uh, maybe it has already been answered partly. I would like to ask you, Peter, have you noticed any different uh, stakeholder groups uh, within the pilot action phase compared to the original phase, so to speak? Have you attracted new kinds of uh, stakeholders? Uh, no new kind, but... Uh, um larger interest it means uh, um, till till we uh, or um, i could say the implementation of uh, of pilot was much more uh, practical and much more uh, clear for uh, for the um, stakeholders uh, uh, because uh, it was implemented in uh, in our region so that means uh, they uh, they were more interested Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Peter. Before we're giving the word uh, um, to Stefania and uh, to Etienne, maybe also we have a, a lot of different routes and uh, representatives here in the in the group uh, of participants. So um, please, um, please come forward with your questions uh, um, because a very good chance to see, for example, how this has been implemented in in Hungary and Italy. So Stefania, do you have um, any remarks on the work of your colleague Peter? <laughs> No, I'm impressed <laughs> by their work. <laughs> uh, there's just one question I might ask is, uh, were there any obstructionists in the uh, stakeholder group? I mean, uh, any part of- I understand, uh, unfortunately not. <laughs> so we, we try to, uh, so th this is also about uh, practice to work uh, with uh, many uh, people who everyone wants uh, to um, to realize or implement uh, their um, you know developments or or um, uh, ideas so we we can uh, well uh, work with them together so no problems with this. Thank you, Etienne. Maybe you? Yeah, if I may. Um, well, one remark uh, and, and one question. 
the remark is uh you know for the for the for the policy change that you managed to to achieve uh, and to fund this uh, this uh, this pilot action further and to be further deployed thanks to the the project proposal that you will submit to this cross border interreg so i think it's you know Stefania was mentioning it earlier it's challenging of course but when it happens then it helps you so much to deploy a pilot action and to go even further and to have it bigger as well so uh, congrats in advance for this uh, if it, if it's uh, finally approved and and maybe one question uh this project is about roots and uh, that's what we've been discussing in the in the two last webinars um do you see a, a change uh happening you try to put more and more this kind of individual stories legends to bring more uh, not only the roots but also the the people behind uh is it something that is more and more that you can see more and more uh, happening in your region uh, thanks to this project or how do you see things in this so uh, not only the route itself not only the dots on the map but also trying to bring behind some some community involvement let's say so um uh, with with these routes uh, thematic routes uh, we um, bring our because our region is centralized uh, everyone is focusing on two main cities which is uh, Estergom with its basilica on hungarian side and uh, Sturavo with its uh, thermal bath uh, on uh, slovak side so more than two million tourists uh, come to the uh, into the region uh, uh, yearly but uh, they usually only stay uh, in uh, these uh, two cities and uh, our um, challenge is uh, to bring them into the region. So uh, this uh, this pilot uh, really really helped us uh, uh, to get them into the regions because uh, we we also implemented uh, information tables where they can uh, read. So educative uh, um, uh, function also uh, we. Um, Put into uh, these projects, and uh, and uh, also we are building uh, infrastructure. So now we have uh, a successful project which is un under implementation, uh, which is building a cycle route. So uh, also cyclists we we'd like to um, uh, send to the region, and um, and so this is what we we are trying to do and do, do our best and also the um, uh, really good experience was and uh, what uh, what uh, really helped us uh, um, is uh, to improve our uh, connection with managing authority of the project so 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 thanks to the uh, policy change um, and uh, yeah this indicator which uh, which we need to uh, fulfill so we our communication uh, communication with the managing authority was uh, more um, yeah, intensive so thank you for the opportunity yeah thank you very much peter it's very interesting also what you say i mean we have uh, written some time ago also a policy brief at the policy learning platform on over tourism you know like the concentration in some touristic hotspots and how difficult it is to bring people also outside to have a more sustainable approach to tourism with biking, for example. So uh, very interesting how many different things you could uh, trigger with, uh, for example, the application uh, uh, that you have been doing here. So um, congratulations again also, also from my side. Yeah, well, this would bring us to, to a last uh, round. Um, Maybe uh, I can stay with you, Peter, first, and then ask our, our speakers uh, uh, to all kind of um, give one key lesson for um, bringing policy change. So what, what would you say, Peter, what was like the, the key thing that you have been doing to, to, um, to enable this policy change? Mm, I, I think... Uh, that uh, we succeed to get uh, policy change um, of, for, for the um, positive use of our region. That means the cultural and the natural heritage uh, sites 
could uh, uh, could could get help, so called, not only financial, but uh, but uh, also education, uh, educational, and uh, and also informational, uh, and they uh, they will be much more well known uh, by incomers and also the, the inhabitants of the region. Very good. And also you managed that the, the knowledge doesn't get lost. You know, I mean, this old people will at one point will be not there anymore. So it's, it's really excellent that you have yeah, this project. With that, with them. Yes, exactly. So uh, key lessons, maybe I, I don't know, I go from left to right or, or uh, Miguel, uh, in, in my screen at least, uh, could I ask you also what, you, what would be one key lesson for you on, on, on bringing about policy change? But the, mo the most important lesson in, in the project was was learning from from Breda, also well, from from all the partners. But the idea of developing in dialogue and co-creating with stakeholders, uh, this uh, approach has been very useful, and it gives you many more ideas. And finally, the stakeholders are the ones using. The, the project. So the, this idea of co-creating and development in dialogue for us, definitely. Thank you. Mark, going to Breda. <laughs> um, I think in the Netherlands, uh, the, the progressive municipalities, uh, in a sort of way, they, they, they got the same kind of policy interests. So for me, it was uh, really nice to look to other countries, to other regions and uh, see a totally different approach and that that gave us in Breda a much bigger learning steep steeper learning curve than looking to other cities in the Netherlands. Very good looking out of the box or thinking out of the box or getting fresh <laughs> fresh ideas from the outside excellent um yeah Søren please. Thank you I think uh, a key lesson uh, at least for me, has been uh, the importance of uh, aligning expectations uh, with stakeholders and managing authorities. I think it's very important that stakeholders are well informed of uh, what they what uh, of what they can expect uh, is going to happen with their uh, preferences. I mean, how much is realistic? Um, I also think it's very important that you align expectations with the managing authorities at, so, so that you uh, at all times have a, uh, a full understanding with them. I mean, that, that you're actually involved in the project, that, uh, that you expect at, at, at some point to involve them even more, to have regular meetings, all these things, so that you have, uh, yes, aligned expectations also within uh the administration uh, yourself so very good yes yeah. no very important aspect thank you thank you so much and before giving the word to etienne uh, of course uh, it was not ladies first this time it was ladies last but stefania um what my, key, you say? my key lesson <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that uh, something that we haven't uh, spoken about so far is that when we exchange good practices with other it helps us watching in the mirror uh, in the sense that also um, uh, we learned something by ourselves, <laughs> from ourselves, by telling uh, these good practices uh, to the other partners. And this was useful for us because we also capitalized something that we already had in our municipality. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. All very interesting points. So, um... I would like to give now the, the word to Etienne. So what is, what is your conclusion, Etienne, from, from what we've heard today on, on how to inspire policy change and, uh, and, and create new interesting policy actions? Yeah, yeah, I think that uh, what all partners said is indeed uh, comforting us within really this idea we had to, to further develop good practices. Uh, it works. It helps to partners to test something, to learn more, to exchange more. Uh, as Stefania was just saying, to not only take one good practice or, or in trade in your region, but also reflect it back 
to to the owner of the good practice so maybe further exchange can lead to to improvement on both sides and to policy changes as well so to to further funding further projects so i, I think that's one of the very great example of how interregional cooperation works it's not only events it's also testing on the ground some good ideas that you have spotted uh, in your partners Thank you. Thank you very much for your words. So uh, I think with this we can very well conclude um, because um, there is now new chances also to to start already with policy actions in in interreg uh, programs. There are new calls coming up also for natural and cultural heritage. Uh, uh, so so uh, please be informed. Go to the information meetings that are being offered. Um, use for example the webinar on the fifth of December to learn about uh, skills, knowledge, and networks and how they are vital for regional policies, uh, use the services of the policy learning platform. We have uh, different uh, possibilities in terms of matchmakings, um, uh, peer reviews, which are individual for your region. So you can ask your policy challenge and we can bring you other experts to, to exchange on them, which we hope is uh, useful. And with this, we would like uh, to say a big thank you to our speakers for preparing, for discussing, uh, was really, really good. A big thank you to my colleagues, to, to Magda Mihalikova and also to uh, Eugenie in the background that you never see. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, with this, um, please let us have your feedback uh, in the feedback survey, which you can see as always in the chat. Um, and uh, all our presentations, uh, the recordings will be available, uh, uh, well, in the next days so that you can watch again or go in more detail on the different links and ideas. So thank you very much um, for all the contributions, uh, for being uh, with us today, and uh, hope to see you next time on one of our events. Thank you, and bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye.